when earning 200k just isn't enough. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your hashtag not sponsored. Well, it used to be cheap coffee. It's get, well, at least it's feeling like it's expensive to me. And let's have a look at this article that was sent to me by a viewer. It's another one about people doing it tough on, well, significantly above average levels of income. And I think, you know, there's a few valuable takeaways from these type of articles that we can we can grab onto and some lessons that we can learn because frankly if you have a bucket and that's you know your bucket of savings and and it, re- it represents you trying to get ahead you know you fill up that bucket to scoop it into your house deposit perhaps or you're paying off your mortgage if it's got a bunch of holes in it it doesn't matter how you know, you're going to struggle to fill that bucket up without everything flowing out. And I would argue, having read this article here, but I bet you that's what's going on here. They're on decent income, good money, they're working bloody hard, but they've just too much is just trickling out. Or they may be keeping up with the Joneses or the expectations of people around them, trying to impress people that they don't really give a shit about, perhaps. What do you think, guys? I'll have a shot of my cheap coffee. Oh, that's good. So, 200k income, not enough to pull Aussie family out of hamster wheel. Yeah, I, I can honestly see that. You'd be burning away money and all this stuff. So, Beck Craig said she and many other families are just getting by despite having higher than average combined income. Oh, oh I mean... You can't just be getting by. You can't use the term just getting by. You may feel like you're just getting by. But if you've got food, if you've got clothing, if you've, you're not, you know, on 200 grand a year, the rental crisis is not going to mean anything to you. The rental affordability crisis won't matter. You'll be able to drop 700, 800 bucks a week on accommodation to make sure your family is housed no matter what. So there's, there's, just getting by when you compare yourself to your peers who may be doing quite well, or maybe the, your neighbours or, or people you know uh, appear to be doing quite well or are showing off. And then there's someone who has to live in Mascot Park because they can't get a place to live because they're on the dole. So there's different levels of just getting by. We've got to keep that in mind. The mother of two said the hard work and sacrifice her family made to earn $200,000 feels like a waste as once admirable salaries aren't enough to live a decent life. Well, yeah, I mean, to get to the point where you're... I mean, I'm assuming this is her family income. Her family made to earn 200 grand, or is it her and her husband each on 200 grand? So a household on 200 grand, that's two people just above average, slightly above average. You know, let's... let's uh, let me bring up the ABS here. ABS. Gov.au. Boom, there we go. We got it here. The average weekly income is 1,800 bucks. Full-time adult ordinary. Times that by 52. You know what? Let's make it a cheeky two grand. Times 52. There you go. So if they're both on this, they're a bit under the average, aren't they? Because if they've got two full-time adults working, and that's not what what is happening. They don't have two full-time adults working. I'm assuming... I mean, if they're both on $200,000, then they should have no problems at all. They shouldn't be worrying about it. So let's say they're each on about 100 grand. That brings the family in at 200. So it's two people on, well, full time earnings. You kind of get into the trap where you can be earning enough to not receive any of the government handouts and support. And oh, I, I, when it, people find out I have seven kids, I cop it all the time. You know, you must be getting all these handouts and money and all that type of stuff. And I mean, what do we get? You know, once you earn a certain amount, it all evaporates. I, I think we can get child care, but we don't want to have other people take care of our kids. You can get it like a week or two of bloody swimming lessons, which is, you know, who, who cares? You, you've got to pay for it anyway. And frankly, that's where the YouTube money goes towards. So the, the, all the money I'm earning from my YouTube channel, all of that stuff, that's been a justification to continue paying for all the kids' extracurricular swimming activities, everything, even when times have been good or bad, just been using that. 
So thank you. Thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel. That's where the money's going from, even if you're watching it. You're helping my kids learn to swim. So it's worth it. One thing we realized that one you know special we get after four kids, all the other ones are free at our, at our uh, pool. There you go. The staff didn't even know that discount existed. So they could be in a position where their family is earning enough income that they can't really get any of the benefits. So it's this kind of, you know, you're wealthy enough with regards to your earnings to not be receiving any of the support, but you're not wealthy enough to feel like you don't have the man on your back riding you all the way. Marketing coach Beck Craig's combined income with her husband might seem incredible to some, but she said they are just getting by. Yeah, I mean, 200 grand for a family isn't, isn't that incredible, to be quite honest. Uh, you, I can see it. If, I mean, if they've got private school fees, all these other costs, driving around, it adds up. I mean, I went to the petrol station the other day, filled up. It was like people everywhere because it was cheap. And they go, I'll do a price lock-in, and they go, oh, mate, I won't need to fill up for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. This is one of the advantages our lifestyle has of working from home and why I see more people want to do it. But if you're not doing that, you're burning through that money. That 200 grand will disappear faster than you think. And remember, the government takes a big chunk of that too. The family of four doesn't splash cash on luxuries, on luxurious things, and moved to an area more than a decade ago where property wasn't too expensive. Despite that, the rising cost of living and necessary expenses like childcare keeps chipping away at the Craig's combined income. Now, that's the thing. Childcare isn't a necessary expense. Uh, the mother or father, one of the couple, could decide to be the primary carer for the family, stay home, take care of the household, cook all your meals, save all your costs there, reduce your petrol expenses. You only need one car or you know one and a half cars. You'll get away with it. But it depends if you got... I mean, they don't have a huge mortgage, it sounds like. But... A lot of people are a bit scared to think about that because you just need two people to get ahead now or to get by. People think $200,000 looks amazing. But if you've got to factor in so many things, she told Yahoo Finance, people work so hard to viciously get to a certain point and a certain number and then it just feels like you're treading water. Well, okay, that means they must be... I mean, is this marketing for her business? What are they spending money on? You know, they, it sounds to me like they're pissing money away, to be brutally honest. Craig said she feels the most financial pressure from growing bills. Yeah, okay. Is this going to be like a uh, lead into an app she's developed to help you pay your bills? I mean, sure, bills go up. whoop de doo Find a way to deal with it. They come in and they're double what they were a month before, and you're like, okay, well, I've worked really hard to get to this point, and I've sacrificed this, this, and this. How many of you in the construction industry just look at this and are laughing? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, it could be the fact that I've been damaged by my experiences running a business, having staff. You know, you got 150 grand in unpaid invoices and you're chasing someone to pay you and oh, they'll pay you on their time or you got to fight for it. Then you still have all the people you're employed and the bills are all coming in. You still got to make that happen. You got to find a way to do it. There's a reason why I went gray really quick. The sacrifice not being home with my kids to get to this position and you think 200000 is a lot of money for Craig, it's not. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, you're giving up time with your children. You don't have much time with them. You've got maybe 10 years, 10 years, the, the formative years, the first seven years of their life. Even just being around is important. I get to see my kids all the time. It annoys me sometimes, you know, because they're kids. That's a part of life. And I, I, I'm quite spoiled in some regards. But we've been doing this for years. We've been taking our kids to the office. When we had our own office out in West End, Rachel would bring the baby in there and you'd have the baby in the office. You know, that's just, I guess, the changes you do to decide to not live the normal life. Hard work and sacrifice not worth the payoff. Yeah, I mean, 
I really get worried the more and more I hear of this mentality because the more people that are repeating this, they think hard work isn't worth it. Well, then they, they uh, expect more handouts, more freebies, more support, more from the government. Where, how does the government get it? They hoover the money up from everyone. The median weekly income on the Sunshine Coast, where Craig lives, is $1,594, or roughly $83,000 per year, according to the ABS figures in 2021. While data from the ATO revealed the median Aussie wage was just $50,980 per year. Yeah, but if you're on this level, or even if, I mean, if your household is on 83 grand, you're going to be getting more benefits than other people are. So it kind of, there's kind of a, uh, I didn't realize this until um, Rachel told me with, with regards to, I wondered how, how could a single mother with four kids, five kids survive? And it's all the stuff they're getting. And here's, here's the thing. If you're in a household and you're earning a certain amount of money, I think, you know, what, 130 grand a year as a household? Not even that much. All these things start to disappear. They start to disappear. So we create this rather dangerous situation where we disincentivize the family unit and you can have people receive financial incentives to, well, become wedded to the government, shall we say. And we've seen in the US how that's played out and all the social issues that manifest from that. That's a really dangerous thing that's going on. So good intentions can lead to terrible outcomes in the long term. The Craig's combined income is much higher, but even taking measures to budget or save here and there, the Queensland mum said she and plenty of others like her feel it's not enough to live comfortably, particularly given how much you have to put in to earn that amount. Uh, what's comfortable? What's comfortable for one person compared to another? You've, we've got to, you know, maybe, maybe we need to start teaching stoicism at school. I know I don't want to add anything to the curriculum, but I'm sure we can drop some stuff. The system is so broken right now, she said. Oh, poor woman sounds really defeated. Really defeated. I, I wonder, do you think blokes say, I mean, the only blokes that say this type of stuff are like the bloody dropkick loser lefties that, you know, their needs not in education, employment or training, you know, they're, or they're like a hardcore professional protester doing some shit, no skill job because they can't be bothered putting in the hard work. I, I, I don't know. The marketing coach, you don't, would you want your marketing coach to tell you this? Putting in the hard yards early on in your career is often done in the hopes there will be some reprieve by the time you decide to start a family. But in Australia, this is no longer the case. Okay, so we're getting a, a female's perspective here. She's probably frustrated that she can't spend time with her kids. That's a discussion she, discussion she should be having with her husband. And frankly, I would argue you need to just Give, change your definition of what a comfortable life is. Change this and just give up some stuff, honestly, to spend more time with your kids, more time with your family. Scale back your business. You know, no one's going to care in 20, 30 years about your marketing, coaching business. I mean, come on. What's going to matter? People are working so many hours, they're exhausted, and people are like, what's the effing point of this? She said to Yahoo Finance. Yeah, oh, I mean, I don't know. I was talking to a mate the other day, um, and you know, he knows how much work I've got on at the moment, so I'm flat out. You know, my hair's fallen off. And he was contemplating, you know, looking at other options because he's a, a highly skilled architect and a project manager looking at other positions he could work for and he could go to a, a you know, higher tier builder earn more money, but then also his quality of life wouldn't be the same. I think he, he realises what a good wicket he is on at the moment. So they get in their cars to get to work, to earn the money, to then come home, pay for a house they're not even spending t any time in and the kids and they're not spending any time with. Yeah, this, she's, this poor woman is working her ass off to build this life when the most important thing she's missing out on. I was talking to my mother-in-law today, dro dropping her off at the train station. My mother, Rachel's mother, visits what, every week or every other week and to spend time with the grandkids. What do you think matters to them? What do you think is more important in the long run? It does feel like that hamster wheel 
I feel like just something is missing right now. Could she be going through a midlife crisis, guys? Could this be what it is? Working yourself to death for all the stuff that doesn't matter. Uh, she's saying there is no financial wins in her household. But that each time they start to feel more comfortable in their finances, a new bill or fee or expense comes along and pushes them back to almost zero. I, I seriously doubt that. I think their budgeting has just gone to shits. Okay, you can't be pulling in 200 grand as a household you know, even after taxes and super, all the other shit you got to pay with. You can't be pulling in that much and not be putting something away. I, I find that hard to believe. Okay, I mean, okay, they're on the sunny coast if they're commuting into Brisbane every day. That's going to burn their petrol. So you got to do something else. So is the Australian wage keeping up with the cost of living? Well, no, the cost of living shot up. She wants to know if she was alone in her financial stress and uploaded a series of TikToks. Oh, boy. Asking if others were experiencing the same thing. Um, some agreed that 200k dual incomes weren't enough. Well, it's probably probably the demo that watches her channel. I am going to hazard a guess here that it's a different demographic to what watch uh, to those of you that watch my channel. Now, let me know in the comments if I'm mistaken here, and you all secretly watch TikTok because I oh I think I put two videos up on my. Heiser says TikTok channel, and it just, oh, I can't be bothered, you know? Um, there are a lot less than managed to get by. Agreed. Overtaxed, council rates, GST, income taxes, three different governments getting paid a fortune. It's not worth working hard anymore. No incentives to try to get ahead, said one. But you got to work hard. Never would have dreamt we'd be saying 200 grand is not enough to live by, live, but it's true, said another. Come on. I, and don't think I'm Mr. Architect who hasn't had tough years, guys. I've been a small business owner, okay? So I know what it's like to have really tough years. And a lot of people, if you haven't run your own business with the challenges that that comes with, you probably don't know what it's like. Uh, a third had a bit of a different perspective. Husband and I are on under 100 grand a year combined. and We survive because we prioritize where our money goes. We are savers, so that helps, they said. Uh, what else? Everyone is going to have an opinion and be in different circumstances, but for her household, it's a struggle. That just... <laughs> I honestly think this has just been done entirely for her to get attention. This has to be TikTok clickbait to get attention so she can use it for marketing. I mean, she's a marketing coach. She's probably going to go to the next uh, B&I breakfast and say, look what I did. I got an article here, here, and here with my marketing strategies of cre you know, coveting controversy. Am I, am I just getting too old, guys, and too bitter for this stuff? I think I am. In a study of how much you needed to earn to live comfortably and happily... Australians had the third highest in the world, according to S Money. An individual needs to earn at least 184000 to be happy. That's more than London and the United States. If we go by that study, happiness will be out of reach of the vast majority of Australians, with the ATO reporting just 4.1% earn over one hundred eighty grand. This is utter bullshit. Money does not link to happiness. You're not suddenly going to earn more money in life or all your problems are going to go away. You're just going to have a new series of problems. All you need, you, you reach a certain point. I'm sure it's, we've talked about studies like this before. You reach a certain point of money that you're earning that's enough that you don't need to worry about it. Okay? You need to, what this family needs to do is get their shit together, sort out their finances, watch a few hundred Dave Ramsey episodes or read the Barefoot Investor book and figure out where their money's going, where they're pissing it away. If they've got a car loan, if they've got school fees, if they've got a credit card, if you're going out for, you know, I don't know, bloody... What, what's the stuff that Karens drink anymore? Like lattes or shit that it costs more than $2. Sorry, $1.50, you get the discount. Sign the app. But, oh. Research from Finder found the average Aussie wants to earn a whopping, what, what, what do we want to earn? 345 per year in order to feel rich. That's almost five times greater than the average personal income of 72 grand. Well, the average Aussie is an idiot. I mean, we, we can see that by the election results, guys. Come on. 
they they're voting for for bloody Albanese and, th- and they trust what he says. So we can't really really put any weight in what the average Aussie thinks right now, can we? Millennials felt they'd need the most money to feel rich at four hundred eighteen grand of one thousand and thirty two respondents found, followed by Gen Z, yep, Boomers. 270 gen x 300 grand so there we go let's well let's have a chat about this one eh? what do you reckon guys is 200 grand not enough i, I think it's, it's a joke i honestly suspect this art this tiktok was done for her to get attention and i really really hope they've got a better handle of their finances but actually now that i think back Remember, we, we looked at a professional couple, a project manager and a factory manager, each earning both over six figures, and they were thankful for the, what was it, the mortgage holidays the banks were doing back during the lockdowns. Remember that? They were thankful. They needed that because they were so unorganized with their finances. And I, I saw a comment uh, viewer mentioned disagreeing with my argument that we can't put financial education in schooling there's no room to put it in the curriculum we need to tie it to other requirements for citizenship maybe to get a driver's license i don't know you gotta you gotta pass a a 10 question quiz about personal finance i don't know how how are we going to train up the masses with this how can we make dave ramsey and barefoot investor cool you tell me i want some suggestions anyway take care everyone have a great day i'll see you next time bye for now